Hello everybody, this is Troy, and we are almost ready to start building our cube. I just have a couple quick things I want to go over with first, and uh, we will start it most likely in the next video. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in the very first, in part one, is we installed a add-on called Bool Tool, but I never explained what it is or how it works, and that's what I'd like to explain now. So, uh, I've also uh, added a script right now so that when I... Uh, when I do something in in Blender uh, right here, it will actually show if I hit a button, if I hit a key. Uh, so uh, you'll be able to see a lot of the commands that I do uh, as they show up here. So if I forget to mention them, hopefully maybe that'll that'll cover me a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just delete those those objects, and uh, I'm going to leave the cube here because I'm going to use that, and I'm just going to create a sphere. I'm going to blow that up a little bit, and we're just going to set that like this so that it, it overlaps. And I'm just using the G key to move it into position. It doesn't really matter for what I'm going to do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple copies of this uh, with Shift D, and uh, that's going to uh, allow me to show you the difference here. Now, without Bool Tool, this is the process you would use. Uh, if I wanted to cut this sphere shape out of this cube, I would select the cube, and I would go over here to this wrench icon, and I would select it, and I would go Add Modifier, Boolean. And now I can choose from a drop-down list, although I haven't named these very well. So uh, I know it's probably Sphere, but we can also use this eyedropper. So I can just select it, and I can click on the Sphere, and it's going to create the Boolean operation. Now, by default, it's using Intersect, and we can see where it is here. I'm going to go to Wireframe. You can see the shape remaining is what is the intersection between the sphere and the cube. So I'm going to change that so instead of intersection, it's difference. So now it's the difference from the uh, from the two objects. But if we're in shaded mode, we really can't see that something's happening. You can only see that in, in the wire mode. So what we can do is we can take this object here. Let's go back to shaded mode. We can take our sphere object and we can go to the object settings here and down here maximum draw type I can change that to be wireframe so now that object is drawn with wire and I can see how that cuts it out uh, or even better I can actually change it to bounds now it dis displays as a box but it's still the sphere and it still does uh, the, the cut like that that's how I would do this manually so with bool tool what we're allowed to do is I'm going to open up the T panel over here and I'm going to find my bool tool. Now I have previously installed it in user preferences uh, and I, I've got boolean operations right here. So instead of having to go through the modifier menu and all that I just need to select my cutting object and then my object that's going to be cut last and I can just say difference and it automatically cut that. Now one thing that we're missing here is that I can't edit this anymore. This is this is now uh, fixed. It's been cut, which is good if that's what you want. But if you want to be able to tweak things, uh, what you would want to do instead is you would want to use. Let me make another copy in case I need one. Uh, select your sphere, select your box, and now there's a difference here. And the difference between these is this one does auto, which does the operation and collapses it all in one step. These down here create a brush boolean and what that does is the exact same thing as I did here except it's with just a single click of the button and it, it sets that all up for you and so I find that to to work very well uh, and that's why we use bool tool that's that's kind of the ease of operation that that gives me uh, finally even go easier uh, I can select my sphere select my cube instead of using these menus I can simply hit control and minus over on the keypad and it will automatically do the cut for me uh, and change this to wireframe. If I want to go to the bounding box, I'm still able to go here and I can set that to bounds. And again, these are all going to be identical then to, to these. That's what Bool Tool does and that's why I use it. So I've got a little bit more time on this video. This is really all I wanted to show on this video before we get going. Um, but I wanted to show just a few things. Uh, we'll start with 
adding an object and what I would like to, you to do is if you're following along I would like you to actually try some of this kind of get yourself familiar with with adding objects uh, and moving things around so let's just make a very simple example let's uh, create a cube object and I'm going to change my dimensions here let's let's make this uh, a 10 by 10 and for the uh, height let's go uh, let's go 0.5 and uh, that's fine what we're going to do is we'll move this up by hitting G and then Z to constrain it in the Z direction and I can see how far I'm moving it up here I'll just go 5 I'll, I'll enter that value and I'm going to create another cube and on this one I'm going to G and Z and I'm going to hold down my control key which allows me to snap and you can see that it's, it's snapping to even increments I'm just going to move it up a little bit there and uh, actually scratch that what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this object but I only want to scale it in Z so I'm hitting Z and it will scale it now that looks a little thick for me I, I'd like to make table legs so what I'm going to do is I'll do scale and then I'll do shift Z and shift Z will scale everything but Z uh, so I can kind of scale the legs like this and I I'm just finding a value here that I like and it looks close to 0.5 so I'm just gonna make those 0 0.5 0 0.5 and uh, 4 now I would like to move these out to the corners and what we can do is we can just G X we can move these out and for your first couple times using this if you're not familiar with how the 3d program works I'd like you to kind of do this the manual way uh, there are many snap tools to make this very easy for you later but I just want you to be familiar with how things are moved around in the interface so what I would say is to just go ahead um, position an object in space use these values to to zero in exactly where you want it and I will just um, roughly make make the other one here uh, <clears throat> like this and let's let's shift click to select that other one and then shift D and I'll hit X to constrain on the X axis and we'll just move it over so what I'd like you to do is just get familiar take an object make an object um, move it around place it uh, add a new mesh uh, UV sphere and make yourself a little still life uh, try to figure out how um, how things are moved around how to place things understand how you can set the scale of an object uh, or position by using the menus and that's kind of your your homework assignment if you're following along uh, one other thing I'll mention here uh, that I forgot to mention earlier when you're navigating the viewport uh, sometimes you want to use a traditional view a top side top front right down here you can go to the view menu and these are located all right here left right back front but you can also see the hotkeys for this numpad 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 and so what you can do when you're in this is you can just simply hit seven on the keypad uh, not seven on your on your numbers that actually does something different uh, seven on your keypad will give you a top view uh, one will give you a front view and three will give you a a side view now the key 5 on there will change it to an orthographic view which uh, will get rid of the perspective for you so when you're positioning an object sometimes you may want to do that so you can you can see exactly where that is uh, the 5 key uh, goes back to perspective just just toggles and 0 key will return you to your camera view if you have an active camera I do not at this time so uh, just orbiting your view again will, will get you back here uh, if you ever need to frame things up you can have an object selected and the period key on the on the numpad will um, zoom you to that object the home key will actually zoom your view uh, and frame up everything in view and those things may help you and that is where I'm going to end this one the next thing we're going to finally get to building our puzzle we're going to start with a core and that will be uh, that will be the next video. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll pick up speed here very soon.